this is the microwave scattering apparatus currently with the cube of spheres which you will use for the Bragg scattering. I'll be going through this piece by piece to explain how to use it and how to take your measurements. The first piece to be aware of is the transmitter. Note that the transmitter and the receiver look similar but the receiver has a dial on it and the transmitter does not. Now something that's very very important to know about the transmitter is that microwaves come out of here. Microwaves are a little bit dangerous such that if this was your face looking into it and it was on that could actually do some damage to your eyes. So any time that you're going to be working in the beam or having your face in the way please have it unplugged. There's no on or off switch it's simply plugged or unplugged. The plug actually goes into the bottom and so once you actually have it plugged in this red light will be on indicating that it is on. So now that it's on we can come over here to our receiver. Note that right now I have pretty much a straight beam and the receiver also plugs in, in this case, in the back. So the receiver itself has an indicator and a knob which adjusts sensitivity. Now note that this is changing what your sensitivity is and this is a fine adjustment. So this is in a way a qualitative measurement. That right now if I turn it on I see a signal and as I adjust this it turns the signal on or off or increases it up and down. So likely what you want to do is find a certain value and then leave this knob alone since this knob will change what your apparent value is. Why you might want this knob is if you want to do a comparison, it might be really easy to have it first centered on a specific reading. So if I changed from the 30x to the 10x, or the 3x, or the 1x, you see that that's off the scale. So what's happening is right now to do your measurement, it's off the scale. Now you would do your measurement, multiply it by 3, multiply it by 10, now multiply it by 30. So this is actually the least sensitive scale, this is the most sensitive scale. So if all you're trying to do is look at what the receiver says when the re transmitter is straight into it, you'll need to use the least sensitive scale. Now, this platform is just for the cubes, it doesn't really matter, but you have an angle indicator here. This is called the goniometer, when you have the ability to change the angle between a transmitter and receiver, for instance. So right now you can see that the transmitter is off to the left at zero, that's more or less fixed. The receiver is at 180, so they're straight across. And this setting is at 0.4. If I start to bring it in so that it's at 200, there's now a little bit of an angle between the transmitter and receiver. Again, I don't want to be right in the beam. So if I'm now looking over the transmitter, you can see that this is off to an angle, but not that big of an angle instead of it being 0.4, it's now less than 0.2. So you can see that as you go to an angle, your signal decreases, and as you come out further and further and further, you're going to have even less. Now, right now, we're at about 230. If instead I turned up my scale such that I'm now on the highest sensitivity, as I move it to a bigger angle, you see it come up, and it does keep coming down. So I read zero here at about 240. So a few things you want to check in general. Right now my microwave receiver is on but my transmitter is not and you can see that the microwave receiver is reading about zero so that's good. If you're seeing a positive measurement when the transmitter is not transmitting you have a problem. The main part of the Bragg scattering is to use this cube, which is in fact layers of styrofoam with metal spheres. Now, the interesting aspect of this is what the spacing is between the metal spheres. You can use something like a ruler to measure that. This platform allows you to position it and change the angle. What you might want to do is start, there's a little plastic indicator right here. You might want to start with that at about 180, and that will allow you to look at differences. So we want to position our cube and look at how the receiver settings are going to vary as a function of angle.
Currently, the transmitter is on, the receiver is also on, and the cube is more or less square. Something you're going to want to do is really determine whether or not you think the sides of the cube are perpendicular to your setup. So right now it's at a 10x setting and we are seeing a signal. Now when you go through to do the measurement, the full manual explains a little bit on how to do the angle, but the basic idea is you're again changing the angle that you're at and seeing how your signal changes. Now we see it plummeting, we see it plummeting as it did before. But now if you look, instead of plummeting right here, there's actually a space where it kind of stays stable and goes back up and then goes back down. So again, as I'm, right now it's pretty low. As I'm pushing it out, we actually see it go up, come back down, and then go back up. So this is indication that there's a special angle. The best way to do this, however, is going to be both rotating this and rotating this so that your incident and reflection angle are the same. Right now, the way that this is coming in and then bouncing off is not geometrically very clear. So you'll need to actually modify both angles. But what you'll be looking for is those places where this goes back up, showing you that there's a peak. So you'd want to think about, in a way, plotting this as a function of angle, but be careful that you're not suddenly changing this since that will drastically change your measurement.